Eric Mangini, Jets, Browns, three rings under Belichick. Fox Sports analyst joining us. The, um, the story that I admit I just, it just shows how good Brian Dayball is. The New York Giants are a playoff team. And Greg Cosell said something yesterday, and it was really funny. He said, Colin, how many great quarterbacks are there? Five? Six? <laughs> if you don't have one, you just can't keep bailing on a quarterback. He got him into the playoffs. Are you surprised by Daniel Jones? Yes, I, I am surprised by Daniel Jones, but, but I'm, I'm less surprised because of, of Brian. And, and Brian was my quarterback coach for me at the, at the Jets. He was my offensive coordinator for me at the Browns. And I know how smart he is. I know how thorough he is. And he's got a great way of relating to players. And he's got a great way of, of taking complicated things and making them a lot simpler. Plus, he's got a defensive perspective. He started in New England on the defensive side of the ball, so he's got that perspective when he's, when he's working with quarterbacks. So I, you saw what he did with Josh Allen. I didn't know it, it would be as good as it's been in New York, but it, it doesn't surprise me knowing Brian as well as, as I do and, and knowing how capable he is. So, so you know Brady pretty well, <laughs> okay, very well. If you had to guess... Because he's leaving Tampa. Where's he going, and why do you think he's going there? Well, I got on, on your train early on when you, you thought San Francisco would be the spot, and I think that's the perfect spot. And, and regardless of, of how Brock Purdy does th through this playoff run, you're still going to have a situation where you've got Brock Purdy and, and Trey Lance, two really young quarterbacks. If you could go and get Tom Brady for a year... And, and with, with the offensive uh, skill positions that you have, the defense that you have, the idea that, that he could go finish his career there, and I, and I would imagine Tom might even take a discount to go to San Francisco. Then you're also in a great situation where you've got him mentoring the two young guys that are, are currently on your roster. I think that, I think that could be a, a great fit and, and kind of a fairy tale ending to his career. By the way, the Titans are a good team, need a quarterback. The Garoppolo or Carr fit there? I I know you like Aaron Rodgers there, and, and it it makes sense to, to try to go get a player like Aaron Rodgers. Look, I brought Brett Favre in New York, so I yeah. know what it's like to go get a really good Green Bay quarterback, and, and that worked out well in, until he got he got dinged up. I think the issue, though, is, is what... Rabel's trying to, to build in Tennessee, and I see Mike trying to build a team that can compete for a championship every year, not just go out and, and try to rent a championship, and, and he's got more influence than ever. I like Derek. I like the idea of Derek Carr in, in Tennessee. Derek seems like a good guy. He's never been on a team with better than a 20th-ranked defense. That's right. Mike can go get that defense in Tennessee fixed. He can use draft picks that you don't give up for someone like Aaron Rodgers to go improve the team long term. And then you've got a, a good quarterback that seems like a really good person at, that you can have for multiple years and, and have a chance to win each of those years. All right. You know the Patriots well. Three rings there. Mac Jones body language. Where are you on that issue? I, I hate it. I, I hate it. And, <laughs> and I think it was Julian Edelman that, that talked about it. It's, it's one of those things where when, when you see guys, you'll see it in the secondary. Someone gives up a big play and one DB points at the other DB. That, that's not about getting anything right. That's about assigning blame. Hey, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It's the same thing with quarterbacks when they point at their wide receivers. That has nothing to do with getting anything fixed. If you want to fix it, you go to the sideline and you talk to that, to, to that player and you get it fixed. The last thing you want to do is, be, is, is point blame and, and try to take the, the pressure off yourself. It, it's, it's not right. It, it's not right. It's not what you should get from your leader. It's not, it's not that he doesn't have things that he can fix himself. And it's a little bit different than when you see Tom Brady have, have uh, frustration. And usually Tom's is on the sideline. It's, it's not necessarily on the field. It, it's, it's not on brand. It's not what you do in New England. And, and it shouldn't be done. It, it, it's, it's not right. Well, it also, Tom's got seven rings. So the reality is Kobe Bryant or MJ could bark. It's different than a guy off the bench barking. Uh, you know, success has its privileges, so I'm going to give us Peyton Manning can bark a little, right? 
Yeah, and he's he's forty five years old. He's 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 practically a, a father figure out there. So yeah, he's got the legitimacy. He's got the, he's got all those all those different things that Mac Jones has none of those things. And and look, the last thing you want to do is is be creating a extra tension in an environment that's already tense. You know Jim Harbaugh very well. I hope he stays at Michigan because I think he means more to college football. Uh, I think he'd succeed wherever he goes. He's a very unique guy. Um, but in college, Eric, I can argue no crazy billionaire owner, no power-hungry <laughs> GM. He can kind of run the show. If he wants to pivot to a new defense or a new coordinator, he doesn't have to ask anybody. He can just do it. Your takeaway on him as an NFL, because I would think with a 44-19-1 and 19 and 1 record, everybody would want him. Maybe not as much as Sean Payton, but he'd be number two. Minnesota passed. Uh, I, it, it looks like, to some degree, NFL people are a tad apprehensive because Jim wants control. That's my takeaway. What's yours? I, I think Jim would be a great solution for a lot of clubs that are looking for a head coach. And, and look, Jim is as authentic a football coach as you're going to find. That, that's all he cares about. And, and what you see is, is what you get. But the other thing that's great about Jim Harbaugh is he's not held to conventional wisdom. And, and I, I've shared this with you before. We used to talk about things that were outside the box, and he'd say, we're the San Francisco 49ers. We can do whatever we want. And, and that's the type of thinking that you need to have in order to stay ahead of the curve, in, whether it's in college football or the league. And, and he, he'll be able to go in, infuse energy. He'll be able to go in and infuse toughness. He'll, he'll look at things creatively. He didn't have total control in San Francisco. I'm not sure how much control he'd necessarily want, but he'd also be willing to, to work with, with someone else to make sure you're getting to the best place. That's what Jim wants. Jim wants to just get to the best place. It's not about Jim pacifying his ego or having total control. He just wants to get to the best spot for the team. All right. Jets aren't starting. I think they're starting Flacco this weekend. Is that a sign to you? Is that a signal to you? Yeah, look, I, I, I know that, that Robert said that he should take some time away and maybe go read a book and, and all those things, and, and I get that. They're saying you need to hit the reset button, but to me, why not start him this game? This game means nothing in, in terms of, of, of standings and, and, and playoffs. This is the perfect opportunity to let him go into the offseason potentially on, on a really high note. And if he goes out and it's as bad as it's been, then that gives you some more clarity as you as an organization go into the offseason as to what you need to do. It's, it, I, I, would, I would have probably played him. And not, I, wouldn't, I would have played him this week to give him a chance to, to try to go into this offseason, not only for himself, but for the fan base, for the ownership, for the team, showing that, that he has the potential to be what they hoped he could be. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.